evening, my dear brothers and sisters. In our journey during this Holy Tuesday, we continue to journey with the Lord. Sa ating mga pagbasa, nakaabang na ang betrayal sa Kanya. Sa ating unang pagbasa, pinapakita na sa pamamagitan ng pagbasa sa mga sinabi ni Propeta Isaias kung paano ang paghihirap na mararanasan niya. An indication of His solidarity with us that in spite of being God, He emptied Himself and became a human being and even becoming a slave. God loved everyone. And tonight, they asked me to share with you my reflection about migrant workers. One of the groups overarching the migrants and the refugees na mahal na mahal ng Diyos at mahal na mahal ng simbahan. My dear brothers and sisters, allow me in my first point to challenge you in this journey of new life and new light, of beginning a renewal, a journey of your renewal, to remind you that we have to value the sacrifices of our migrant workers. Alam ninyo, sa Biblia, ang migration is one of the many themes. Sa una pa lang, alam natin ang nangyari sa mga Israelita. They were enslaved by the Egyptians. Alam natin kung paano sila naglakbay sa disyerto. That's why in Leviticus, the Lord reminded them, continue to show respect to the aliens among you as if they were born in your native land. Because remember that once you were slaves in Egypt. And of course, we all know that even our Lord Himself became a refugee. After He was born in Bethlehem, of course, we know that His life is in danger. That's why Joseph escaped, the Holy Family escaped to Egypt. This is again a manifestation of His oneness with us, na kung tayo ay natatakot, na kung tayo ay umaalis, na kung tayo ay naghahanap ng mabuting lugar, Jesus is with us. Even the apostles themselves, Paul, his job is a tent maker. And we all know that as he continued to spread the gospel, he was also a migrant worker. Kaya in this category, sabi kong, oo nga no. Ako pala bilang isong misyonero, a foreign missionary, is also a migrant worker. A migrant because I moved to another country and a worker because I'm working in the vineyard of the Lord. So mga kapatid, Mahalaga ang migration, mahalaga ang paglilipat kung kinakailangan dahil ito ay nakasaad at kasama sa buhay kahit ng mga tao sa Biblia. This is very close to our heart, the reminder to value the sacrifices of our migrant workers. Why? Because we know that the Philippines had a lot of overseas Filipino workers. In the current statistics of PSA or Philippine Statistics Authority, As of 2020, there are 1.77 million Filipinos working abroad. And out of this, almost 60% are women, 59.6 to be exact. And 46.7%, almost 50%, are workers of what we call elementary occupations. Sila yung mga gumagamit ng, ng physical strength. And their works are routine, like cleaning. Of course, we know that a lot of them are be belongs to the domestic jobs, like domestic helpers. And this is a reality. That's why a lot of us are their family members, kaibigan, kamag-anak. Kaya magandang paalalahan natin kung anong magandang value and the sacrifices that they are giving to us. In a lot of my sharing, I have shared with you that once I also was an OFW. I am a computer engineer and I worked in Japan for six years. Alam natin na hindi lahat ng OFW ay nagsasuffer. Marami sa kanila, really successful in terms of financial or even have a very comfortable life. Pero hindi natin pwedeng alisin na mas marami ang nagihirap. In one of our prayer meetings and our prayer group when I was in Japan, pagkatapos ng aming prayer meeting, one of the titas who shared 
really a very good reflection about the gospel, immediately blurted out and cried. Sabi niya, I am an educated woman because I know that he's very, she's very intelligent. I am an educated woman. I even have, I even graduated in college with, with honors. Pero anong ginagawa ko? Nagkukuskus ng toilet? Ano ang ginagawa ko? Nag-aalaga ng mga bata na hindi ko anak. Where is justice? And I remember one of my uh, one of the members also as a single single a friend always serving in the church in Tokyo. One time nawala na lang siya. One month siyang hindi nagse-serve. Sabi ko, anong nangyari? And then all of a sudden nalaman na lang namin na hindi pala siya documented at siya ay kinulong na parang isang kriminal. Ang gusto lang niya ay magkaroon ng mabuting buhay at mabigyan ng kanyang pamilya ng magandang bukas but he was treated as if she was a murderer. One time pa uwi ako, we had a stopover in Hong Kong. And at the back, I was just listening to the conversation of our kababayan, so excited na bumalik. But as they nagkikwento sila kung gaano kaliit ang kanilang tinitirhan, kung gaano sinalipustan ang kanilang amo, kung gaano nila namimiss ang kanilang anak at ang kanilang pamilya, I cried. I cried because I know that this is not part of the will of God. The will of God for us is to have a good life. The will of God for us is to have a fullness of life. Therefore, these sacrifices sometimes can be actually solved. But our kababayans, most of them, and all some of them, are really suffering. Back in Japan, in our prayer group also, we had a member, a trainee. Alam nyo kano nangyari? They were asked to be trainee papuntang Japan. Pero pagdating doon, alam naman nila na sila ay construction worker. Some agencies are actually abusing this, this free training. I know that this is solved already. I hope it is solved already. I, I tried to, to research about this. I think the Philippine government and the Japan government already solved this. But they are treated unfairly. Pareho sila ng trabaho ng kanilang mga Japanese counterpart. But their salaries are so small. At sometimes, wala silang off. And they are put in the most dangerous, you know, work in the construction work. Handling chemicals that are toxic. My dear brothers and sisters, being a migrant worker is not easy. Common to all of us are actually being uprooted to the culture, to the religion, and to the comfort of our family. You know, isa sigurong common sa lalo ng matagal ng nagtatrabaho sa abroad or mga migrants and migrant worker, ang dami mong nabimiss, lalo ng pagkain. Kasama na pala ang pagkain. Siyempre, namimiss mo yung pamilya. Pero kasama na rin yung pagkain. I was so blessed when I was in Japan. I, I actually, I was assigned in Tokyo. And then after that, in the Yokohama area. So, malapit sa mga Filipino store. So, nakakabili ako ng chippy, ng patsit kanton, ng kung ano-ano man na gusto ko, na namimiss ko. Sinigang mix kung gusto mo magsinigang. But I realized, actually, mas, mas nahirapan ako pagdating sa South Africa kung saan ako naka-assign ngayon. Because I'm assigned in a northern part of South Africa, and going to capital, you have to drive six to eight hours. Kaya mahirap. Nung lockdown, mas marami ako natutunang recipe dahil sa YouTube. Kahit na minsan iba talaga kasi iba rin yung merong wala eh. But you have to make of it. Pag namis mo ang lumpia, namis mo ang ginataang bilo-bilo, minsan namis ko ang toron, I have to make whatever meron doon. And this is actually a very good virtue also of Filipinos. We are so flexible. In South Africa, we have one this. Meron tayong tinatawag na mopani worm. Kumakain po kami ng uu doon. Noong una, pag tinitingnan ko, sabi ko, parang hindi ko naman makakain to. Pero sabi ko doon sa nagluluto, pwede bang pakat mo na lang para medyo hindi naman siya magbukhang uod? Kasi the usual that they serve, talagang uod, hindi mo talaga siya makain. Kasi parang pagtingin mo pa lang, parang ayaw mo nang kainin. So dahil sobra ko namimiss yung dried squid, 
kasi sa novitiate yun ang favorite namin na na almusal sa Mindoro. Sabi ko, isipin ko na na dried squid to. Tapos nung ningunguya ko siya, oo nga, dried squid nga. Medyo malapit yung lasa niya. So I was so happy. You know, minsan naaliwin mo na lang ang sarili mo dahil sa namimiss mong pagkain. Eh, no? But, but it, it, it actually helped a lot because of our flexib- flexibility as Filipinos. But as our response, as family, relatives, friends, of our overseas workers, of our migrant workers abroad, I would like to propose three things. First, let's reach out. Let's have deeper relationship with them. We are so happy that in our generation, meron ng internet. Because before, magre-record ka pa ng mga tape, cassette tape na iniikot-ikot. Mukha na lalaman tuloy yung generation ko. Ano? Tapos magsusulat ka pa talaga. But right now, we can have deeper connections because of technology. Secondly, let's value their sacrifices. Kung ikaw ay pamilya ng OFW, pwede po ba let us save? Hindi po pinupulat ang pera abroad. Pinaghihirapan ito. We have a lot of migrant workers who have two or three jobs, especially in the States. No? At marami pang iba. Let's, let's value their sacrifices. I forgot to mention, alam mo, the highest concentration of OFW is in Asia, more than 80%. And 26% are in Saudi Arabia. Different religion. Kaya I'm so inspired with our migrant workers doon. Alam mo may nag-share sa akin. Alam mo, Father, dahil bawal kaming magsimba, ang ginagawa namin sa isang kwarto, tinatag- linalagyan namin sila ng mga dyaryo para hindi marinig sa labas. And then we try to pray and read the Bible. Kaya let's let's really let's let's value their sacrifices. Hindi yung pag-uwi nila minsan naalala ko nung naalala ko nung nung, nung nagtatrabaho pa rin ako sa Japan. Minsan andyan hihingi ng maraming pasalubong. Hindi mo lang makapagtanong, kamusta po kayo? I am here to rest. Pero minsan mas inaantay pa yung pasalubong kaysa bigyan ng pahinga. Ang OFW na pagod na pagod pagkatapos ng ilang taon ng pagtatrabaho. That's why if you have a family and a friend who is OFW, you can, can you give time with them to rest also? Later on, na humingi ng pasalubong. At kung may pasalubong sa inyo, treasure it kahit gaano pa kaliit yan. But most importantly, save. A lot of our kababayans, pag uwi nila, magsisimula silang muli. Because a lot of families are thinking na pinupulot lang ang pera at wala silang napupundar. And my last point is very timely and very practical. Can we vote wisely? May factor ang ating boto. Patuloy nating i-research ang plataforma ng ating mga kandidato para sa ating mga migrant workers. The Philippines is so rich. Ang yaman ng bansa natin. Pero bakit pa kailangang pumunta sa abroad? Dahil napupunta lamang ito sa iilan. Para sa ating kinabukasan, bumoto po tayo ng tama. At patuloy natin, the most ideal thing is, alam niyo kung magtatanong kayo sa kanila, hindi ko konti ang magsasabi na, sana hindi na lang ako babalik. Sana mayakap ko araw-araw ang aking mga anak. Sana makasama ko parati ang aking asawa. For their sake and for the future of our country and for our love of, for God, let us vote wisely. The second category that I would like to, to highlight in my reflection is this. Support the mission of the church on migrants and refugees. You know, the basis of the teaching of, of the church in migration is the dignity of the human person. As God created us in His image and likeness, ang bawat isa sa atin ay may dignidad na equal at pantay-pantay. A lot of stereotypes among the migrants and the refugees are this, either pabigat sila sa lipunan or pangalawa, nagkukos sila ng chaos and violence in society. 
this is very rampant in the states or in European countries with or a lot of refugees and migrants coming from Middle East. And dami ang misconception about them. Even in South Africa, a lot of neighboring countries coming from Zimbabwe and Mozambique are coming to South Africa being abused, lalong lalo na sila kapag sila ay undocumented. My dear brothers and sisters, this human dignity ay pareho sa ating lahat. I would like to ask you, marami sa atin nag-outreach, lalo na kapag December, ano? Pag pumupunta ka sa in an, in an outreach area, sa lugar ng mga mahihirap, obserbahan mo kung ano ang nararamdaman mo or obserbahan mo kung ano ang nangyayari sa mga kasama mo. Sometimes we are there like we are superior. We are giving these goods out of pity for you. Dahil ako, blessed ako ni God. Ikaw, minsan, nararamdaman nila na ay parang second class citizen lang ako. But my dear brothers and sisters, this is not the real outreach. The real outreach is to treat the other person as if because we are equal, equal in dignity, and equal in the image and likeness of God. Pansin ninyo kapag nagdo-donate kayo ng damit, Yung, in South Africa, one time, I, I felt so, na, naiyak ako. We had a lot of friends from Europe. Pagdating nung mga, nung mga bagahe ng mga old clothes, ang mga dinala nila, halos hindi mo na masuot. Ang dumi-dumi. And even here in the Philippines, nakita niyo yung bagyo na ang daming nagbigay ng mga old clothes. Tapos, natutuwa sila kasi nag-picture-picture sila, di ba? Kasi ang kakapal, puro mga winter clothes. Paano nila masuot yun? Meron pang mga gown, di ba? Meron pang mga, mga commercial to. Pero Jollibee and McDo, for example, mga uniforms. I mean, no, well, okay lang naman yun. Pero yung madumi, yung hindi man lang nalabhan, yung tipong parang basahan na lang, you know what signal are we giving kung nagbibigay tayo ng ganon? that you do not have dignity, that we are not equal in dignity, na ang kaya mo lang isuot ay ang madumi kong damit na pinaglumaan ko na. If we treat our brothers and sisters equally, we want them to eat what we are eating, and we want them to wear what we are wearing. Kaya sa susunod na mag-donate kayo and mag-reach out, can you please check, maisusuot ko pa ba ito? Can I actually wear this outside? If your answer is no, wag niyo nang ibigay. Out of the dignity, labhan natin kung pwede pa planchahin para pag natanggap niya, sasabihin niya, wow, the giver treat me that we have equal dignity. The same principle goes on how we should treat the migrants and the refugees. This is basically about the dignity of the human person. Ang dami nating matutunan sa kanila. Ang kanilang kultura ay napakayaman. Nung nakaraan, nagkwentuhan kami ni Father Jerome Marquez sa our provincial. Kasi nasa Lubang Island kami. Sabi ko, Father, when I was here, merong isang parishioner na tanong sa akin. Sabi niya, bakit kayong mga SVD, yung mga foreigner ay na-assign niyo dito? Sabi niya, bakit? Ang hirap eh kasi mag-aaral pa sila ng language. Minsan, hindi namin maintindihan yung Tagalog nila. It is not efficient, Father. Why you just not as- assign, you know, Filipinos in our parish? And then I realized that when we are gathered together, coming from different nations, we're actually telling the people that, hey, the church indeed went to the ends of the earth na ang simbahan ay hindi lamang simbahan ng mga Pilipino, na ang banal na salita ay pumunta sa malayong lugar. And we are actually exchanging cultures. We are not an efficiency. Pag nakita ng mga tao na, hey, magkagaling sila sa iba-ibang lugar, pero bakit sila nabubuhay na sama-sama? We are witnessing to them that even if you are different, you can live together. Ito ang nabibigay din ng mga migrants and refugees. Meron silang kultura na napakayaman na pwedeng ibigay sa simbahan. Alam mo, ang iba sa ating mga OFW sa ibang bansa, they are struggling even in the church. 
Alam mo sa Japan, yung isang grupo, ano ba naman yung mga Pilipino? Kain ng kain pagkatapos ng misa. Dinadala nila yung, dinadala nila yung Nazareno. Ano ba yan? Ang itim-itim. But little did they know that out of our devotion, we can share something to them. That is why in the principle of supporting the migrants and the refugees, we are actually exchanging cultures and the giver of the good news are also receiving the good news. No? Kaya ang prinsipyo ng simbahan sa pagtanggap ng mga migrants and refugees is this. We have to use our head and our heart. Our heart, we have to treat them as our brothers and sisters na merong maibibigay sa atin. That we, they have equal dignity like us. Therefore, kailangan natin silang mahalin. But we also have to use our head. Anong ibig sabihin? So, Father, ibig sabihin, may open na lang yung border at patuloy na nabuksan lang at papuntahin kung sino man ang nangangailangang punta. But the churches also, we have to use our head for the common good. Kung maghihirap na ang mga tao na nasa loob ng country, then the government should also wise. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 20 to 41, it says, The more prosperous North nations are obliged to the extent that they are able. Ito yung paggamit ng utak. To the extent that they are able. Hindi ibig sabihin na ikababagsak na ng, uh, ng kanilang bansa. And my last point, my dear brothers, so how are we going to support? Sorry, the, for the second point, we have to pray for the mission of the church, for the migrants and refugees, and of course, we also have to financially support them. In South Africa, we have the World Day of Refugee and Migrants, and we're also giving, I think we're also doing it here in the Philippines. And lastly, my dear brothers and sisters, in this recollection, the third point that I would like to highlight is to acknowledge the diversity in our midst. So Genesis nung sinabi ni God, I have created you in the image and in my image and likeness. Male and female, I have created you. Yung male and female na yun, diverse yun, pero kaya nilang mabuhay. In the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, there's no longer Jew or Greek, no man or woman, no slave or free. You all have one dignity. In the history of our country, marami, marami na pong migrants and refugees. Of course, the first one we all know, our Chinese brothers and sisters. Alam niyo sa history ng ating bansa, ang laki ng contribution din nila. Even our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, has actually Chinese blood. Kaya kung, may, kung meron kayong time, be, be, visit Bahay Chinoy in Intramuros. And you will be amazed that even if they struggled, even if they made fun of them, they continued to actually contribute in our country. I was assigned in St. Jude Catholic School, our Filipino Chine, uh, Chinese Filipino school in Malacanang. One time, meron kaming grupo ng mga estudyante. Lumaban sila ng sabayang pagbikas and they won. Sabi ng mga audience, ay, in chick pala yan eh. Hindi pala Pinoy. How dare them? A lot of our Chinese Filipinos are already fourth, third, fourth generation. They were born here. At tanungin mo sila. They treat themselves as Filipinos. Naiyak yung mga estudyante. Father, kailan po ba namin mararamdaman na kami ay Filipino? Kailan po ba namin mararamdaman na gusto namin maging katulad ninyo? Because sometimes we feel that we are still outcast because we are not, quote-unquote, pure Filipino. Even the word in Czech, a lot of our Chinese Filipinos, it's better to call them Chinoy. There's an argument, okay lang po ba? Is it derogatory for me to be safe? Just don't call them in Czech, you know? Because in, other, in the history of the country, of course, other professors are saying, no, no, it means his uncle. It means, you know, chinky eyes or something. But for me to be safe, I don't use the word in Czech. Just word Chinoy because they are Filipinos like us. In the history of the country, the Jews and Vietnamese also came. Naalala niyo, panahon ni Manuel Quezon, kaya nga wala tayong visa sa Israel because we actually embraced a lot of Jews during the Second World War. 
And of course, meron din tayong mga Indian Filipinos among our midst. Minsan tinatawag natin silang, ay, bumbay, bumbay, five, six. Some of them, because some of them are my friends. Ay, di ba, Father, bumbay is a place. It's Bombay, you know? So parang tinatawag mo, ay, ikaw, Quezon City ka, ikaw, Manila. No? Better we can call them Indian Filipino also, especially those already who have Filipino citizen. In South Africa, this is very, very the color of the skin. No? Hindi ko nakwento kanina. Grabe din ang struggle. Alam nyo, because of xenophobia, may mga sinusunog na mga Zimbabwean, may mga sinusunog na mga, mga Mozambican sa South Africa because everyone treats them as in rapist and everything. Even sometimes, we are racist. Hindi lang natin alam. Naalala ko sa seminaryo nung Ash Wednesday because we have a lot of Africans in the seminary. Isang classmate ko sabi niya, Uy, Kuya Jay, huwag na tayong mag-alala kapag maubusan tayo ng abo. Sabi ko, bakit? O, oh, ayan yung classmate natin. O, naubusan tayo ng abo, kuha lang tayo sa kanya. Tapos ilalagay na natin dyan. It's a joke. It's seemingly harmless joke. Sometimes, dahil gusto natin masyadong pumuti, nilulook daw natin yung mga maitim. But my dear brothers and sisters, we have to be sensitive. Lalo na pag nalaman natin ang kanilang pinagdaanan sa buhay. We are all equal, children of the Father, with equal dignity, because God created us in His image and likeness. In our journey and the desire during this Holy Week to have a new life and new light, in our journey in renewal, three points that I would like to share. First, let us value the sacrifice of our own migrant workers. Secondly, let's support the mission of the church. We continue to protect the vulnerable. Let's support the mission of the church for the refugees and the migrants. And lastly, let us acknowledge the diversity in our midst. We are all children of the Father. Gusto niyang mahalin natin ang bawat isa. Ano pa man ang ating kulay, ano pa man ang ating edad, ano pa man ang ating kasarian, ano pa man ang ating paniniwala. Therefore, in this Mass, this is our prayer. Lord, sorry. Sorry that sometimes I feel that I'm superior with others. I would like you to ask for the grace that I will be able to value the sacrifice of our migrants, that I will value the mission of the church on migrants and refugees, and that I will continue to be instrument of accepting the unity amidst diversity. May God give us these graces. Amen.